Uh, so thank you very much and welcome for this uh, to this uh, second session on corporate M learning week. I know it does create bandwidth. That should be okay. <laughs> I like that. Mingling is your middle name. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if uh, some of you did join us yesterday as well. Uh, that's a quick overview of uh, upside learning. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We've been in business for about nine years now, serve about 150 clients in 13 countries. We offer a learning management system, uh, a dedicated uh, mobile learning platform, and a lot of custom learning solutions, both E and M. And we've won a lot of awards. You can see some of those logos there. And in the last two, three years, we've been sharing uh, some of our thoughts and perspectives uh, on our blog, through some free ebooks and white papers. And more recently, we've partnered with some research bodies like the ASTD, Brandon Hall Group, Towards Maturity in Europe, to bring out uh, research reports which can help uh, organizations take more independent and more uh, informed decisions about their initiatives. Most of these research that we are supporting is uh, towards the mobile learning initiatives. Okay, a quick recap of what we discussed yesterday and also to help uh, people who did not uh, manage to join us yesterday. Because these are, uh, some of these are very important concepts uh, for uh, what we're going to discuss in terms of implementation of mobile learning. So we discussed uh, what is mobile learning? So we didn't set out to really define mobile learning yesterday, but to really list out things that can be considered as part of, as part of mobile learning, the loose definition or elements that you could really want to bring into mobile learning fold. Uh, some of these, of course, you would not uh, imagine to be parts of mobile learning uh, instinctively, instinctively, and hence it is important to possibly think of mobile learning as not just mobile learning, but mobile everything. So in simple terms, what you can achieve on mobile in your organizations is much, much more than what you can possibly define in just uh, the term mobile learning. The other key principle that we discussed yesterday was uh, essentially taking a quote from Clark Quinn from his book, uh, Designing M Learning is mobile learning is about augmenting our learning and our performance. And this is where I think uh, a lot of uh, stress on performance uh, really comes in uh, when you're looking at it from the corporate perspective. So I think the second key concept or the key principle that we should have in mind when we're looking at creating M learning or implementing M learning in the workplace is mobile augmentation. So two key principles, uh, mobile everything and mobile augmentation. And those, with those two, we'll really move forward into what we wish to discuss today. Uh, hello, Martin. Hello, Lutz, if that's the correct pronunciation. Sorry if that's not correct. Hello, Larry. Xavier. Thank you all for joining in. OK, uh, before we get into uh, the, the steps that we need to really follow when we are implementing mobile learning in the workplace. Let me quickly take you through some of the mobile learning myths that are doing rounds. And you may have also really struggled with some of these at some point of time. Uh, and these are really the key barriers to implementing a decent mobile learning solution in your enterprise. Number one. It is just e-learning on the phone. I hope you can see uh, there's some text on the bottom of that image, which is essentially the, the myth that we're talking about here. E-learning on the phone. Now, that's you know uh, a very uh, uh, simplistic view and a very wrong view, if I can say so. No sound? Yeah, there's no video as of now, but uh, can you guys hear me all right? Can everybody hear me all right? All right, there are a couple of people who say yes, yes. All right, 
So that was, I think, uh, Lutz who was saying there was no sound. Lutz, if you want to reconnect, uh, uh, log out and log in again. Uh, Larry, Larry, if you want to log out and log in again. Right. All right. So we will move forward with the second, uh, also this one, which is obviously a, a, a wrong concept. You know, what's really being seen here uh, is that, irrespective of the device or where it is going to be used, we are simply saying whatever we were doing in e-learning, whatever we were delivering in on PCs and desktop PCs or laptops, maybe, is good enough to go on to the mobile devices. And you would see, you know, that's why there would sometimes be uh, uh, a demand for converting or putting e-learning onto iPhones and iPads. And uh, I think that's a, that's a big mistake. Uh, you know, I, I fundamentally believe that uh, desktop or PC-based learning is very different from what you can do on mobile devices. Uh, laptops or tablet learning is somewhere in between, but still it is unique. So this is one of those key things that with, uh, on the wrong ones with which most people start saying that we just put our e-learning onto uh, onto mobile devices. The second one is thinking that this is just learning on the move. Now again, the the, the two key principles that we were discussing, you know, learning uh, mobile everything and mobile augmentation. Here again, the focus is just on learning. And on the move, uh, especially when you're looking at the, your, your staff, which is obviously, you know, adults, they really are not looking to learn on the move. They're probably looking to solve problems uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, when they are on the move or they're doing a job, that's, that's when they're really looking for some support. So it's not just learning. It's probably more than learning. Sometimes, yes, maybe it is learning. Most of the times, no. Small screen size is unsuitable for learning. Uh, probably, yes. Uh, there is indeed uh, some sort of research that suggests that uh, as the screen size increases, the retention increases. Uh, and that was done, uh, I think, in 2008 by Neff and Reeves. Uh, however, uh, there is, uh, again, if you go back to the two key principles, what are we trying to do with the mobile devices? Are we trying to deliver large e-learning content courses or are we trying to support uh, our, our staff in delivering or doing something, uh, performing, you know, achieving something rather than just doing a, a, a module? So that's probably the key difference. Uh, you can also think about, you know, uh, the small screen size is only limiting if you are trying to put uh, only courses onto your program, uh, onto your onto the devices. You can also look at uh, voice-based solutions. You can look at uh, SMS-based solutions, which does not really uh, have the constraint of that small screen size. Okay, uh, I can see a couple of you are still struggling with the audience, so sorry about that. There is uh, the other one that we're looking at as a mobile uh, learning myth is uh, mobile content is expensive to create and distribute. Probably yes, if you're trying to create an app for everything that you want to achieve. Uh, that's, uh, that's really again a wrong way to consider uh, mobile learning because 
there are some things where you're only looking to put information out to your staff. There are some things where you're only looking for them to access some information, uh, which is actually through live servers. So in any case, an app kind of a solution may not be more suitable. App does work in certain circumstances, but not always. Also, there are a lot of tools that are available now which can help you in uh, you know, creating M-learning yourself. Uh, you know, a lot of them publish into HTML, and there are tools which are available which can help you publish cross-platform apps as well. Uh, in a way, I think this, uh, this was more or less true about three, four years ago. Now, probably not. So if you are viewing it in the, in the right way, uh, for the right purpose, if you are keeping the two principles in mind, I don't think mobile content is going to be expensive to create or distribute now. It is not secure. Well, uh, it is, uh, you know, like uh, most of the things, uh, it is obviously having its own issues. A uh, phone is uh, more uh, likely to be lost. You know, you might just leave it in a restaurant or forget it on a bus, etc. So if your phone is not secured in any way, uh, there is obviously compromise possibility with the data that it's carrying. Uh, but then there are ways and means to really uh, make sure that that does not happen. A very simple one is to have a login password, which is uh, uh, an easy deterrent. But then more complex ones are encryption or employing uh, 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 softwares or tools which are called uh, mobile device management tools or mobile application management tools, which can help, you know, for really uh, uh, high-end security stuff, you can even do a remote wipe. So if you have a, uh, a device lost or, you know, you fear that it might be compromised, you can actually have a remote wipe applied to that. So there are solutions that are available which uh, can really help in uh, uh, addressing this issue. Create once and deliver on all devices. Uh, that's something which, uh, you know, again, we have to see how suitable it will be. So if you are creating something for, uh, you know, for, for the iPhones and you want to deliver the same thing on the iPads, uh, I'm not sure if that would really work well because, uh, again, the context needs to be seen, how the learner will be able to access it, in what situation, etc. I mean, and, and I have an example which uh, we'll take a look at it later in, the, in, in this uh, session. Uh, but yes, uh, just creating once and delivering on all devices is something that has been, uh, in a way, uh, kind of blown out of proportion. Sometimes it is useful. So let's say if you have a blog, uh, and if it uh, kind of uh, has a, a more flexible shape and it can present stuff in a more uh, interesting manner on all sorts of devices. So let's say if you have a, a WordPress blog and that will come out well on a phone as well as an iPad as well as on the desktop, that's brilliant. But then that's the kind of information for which it is built. Not everything is, is falling into the same category of information or a knowledge asset that you are really trying to build. So if it fits the purpose, excellent. If it doesn't, I think we don't really need to bother too much about whatever I have created needs to go out on all sorts of devices. And, you know, fundamentally it may just not work because the learners won't want to see it on all the devices in any case. And the last one is COM compliance is a must. Uh, this is again uh, coming from our e-learning uh, uh, days. Uh, heritage. Uh, we are really uh, thinking that we need to track everything that is being done on mobile. But again, if you go back to the first principle that it is not just learning that people are doing, they're doing much more uh, and not all of it can be tracked uh, or should be tracked. Uh, you know, there are of course, uh, so fundamentally, why do you need to track? I think uh, most of the things that people are going to do on mobile devices, you may not even need to track. All right, so uh, we were discussing about SCOM compliancy. So Qualcomm, uh, they have implemented so much of mobile learning, but they have really not uh, uh, bothered about a lot of tracking. What they are really doing is just track it as if it was a website. How many visits are being made, how many times the content is being accessed, which will actually give us a good idea of how 
good that content is, how relevant that content is, because that content is being really accessed when uh, the the staff needs it to do something. So instead of really tracking whether they've completed something or not, so that's really the fundamental aspect of it, whether you want to track or not. Uh, but the other side, which is uh, the technical aspect, uh, so far I think uh, there has been uh, issues with tracking uh, using SCOM or something because a uh, few of the browsers don't allow you uh, to open, uh, or phones don't allow you to open new pop-up windows or even frame sets, so tracking becomes difficult. And uh, you know, if you have to really track when there is no internet connection, then you need to build some sort of a wrapper around it which can store data till you are connected back to the internet to pass on that data. But then there is a new development that's uh, uh, coming in, which is tin can. I'm sure some of you have heard of that. And that should uh, change uh, this. It is being built for offline tracking. And of course, it has a conceptually very different uh, thing. It's almost like tracking your live stream. So anything that you do would be tracked, and that would be added to your uh, personal learning achievement, if you would want to call it. But again, uh, just coming back to our discussion, uh, is COM really required for all of the uh, mobile learning implementation that you do? Uh, I really don't think so. So we should do it if you're especially doing compliance training. Uh, yes, there there is a requirement to do that, but otherwise, uh, really no. All right. So that's really all the uh, seven uh, myths that I wanted to share. I'll move on to the, the implementation aspects of uh, mobile learning. And I've listed them as six key steps uh, to successful implementation. The first one being identifying the real need. Now, this is just a collation of the uh, drivers that we discussed yesterday, which is uh, something that's happening on a more global scale and uh, would be impacting your organization as well. So for people who were not able to join us yesterday, I'll just quickly go through them. It is uh, the six of them, which is doing more with less, so essentially increasing productivity and uh, you know trying to reduce uh, uh, downtimes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And mobile just fits in very well over there. There is a growing mobile workforce in uh, in the world and in, in your organization as well, which is going to impact. <laughs> All right, no problem. Okay, so. Uh, the mobile workforce is growing, which will actually uh, force us to look at uh, every aspect of managing them, right from communication to providing training in a different way, and mobile devices would play a key role there. There is a general shift in computing that is happening, which is our third factor here, which is moving from PCs to mobile devices, really. We're already beginning to hear the post-PC era, you know, and it's not really new. We've been hearing that for about two years now. But we are now beginning to see the shift really, really happening. Uh, there's changing behavior, uh, which is uh, really taking place for your existing staff. And there's new age workforce that is coming in. You know, the existing staff is becoming uh, more dependent on certain things that they want to do on their mobile phones. And very soon they would want to really uh, want to do more of their learning and accessing information or connecting with colleagues through mobile phones. And the new age workforce is really somebody you know, people who have lived their life on the net, uh, and they ha they are really very savvy with the mobile devices, definitely more savvy uh, compared to the previous generations. And they are also creators, uh, apart from being consumers of information. So like, uh, as I said yesterday as well, like this movie move, uh, this generation is actually even more sophisticated in, in creating content. They, they like to get involved in creating, so they would be part of creating their own learning. So you can imagine more uh, social just in time from wherever they are, they would be contributing to things and discussions. And then adults obviously learn differently. They need to have a purpose. They need to learn when they, they really learn when they get stuck, when, when they are forced, forced to learn. So otherwise, if you, if you give them a large chunks of information, a lot of them would really forget that. So there is opportunity to space out learning uh, with mobile devices. And this is what we discussed in our session yesterday. So these were the key drivers that we, but again, coming to the need for mobile learning, what is your real need? So when you are implementing mobile learning in the workplace, you need to identify your real need. 
what do you wish to really achieve not just because everybody is doing it and there are you know some uh, uh, global drivers which are pushing everybody yes that should tell us that we that it's time to look at mobile learning but you still need to identify what is your real need mobile devices like cell phones are cheaper than tablets absolutely and uh, there is uh, a slide uh, coming up which talks about how cheap they're going to get uh, especially mm -hmm. the smartphones uh, no, yes uh, students have that uh, you know i'm just reading this comment out native students have mobile phones not tablets i agree uh, uh, however uh, the fact is that uh, in the corporate space uh, it's been the tablets which have been pushing the adoption of mobile learning uh, no you know i i as i said earlier i don't think tablet is the perfect form for mobile learning but again yes because there has been tablets and there has been so much of uh, investment made into tablets there is uh, usage uh, that is being searched for and one of them is learning connecting uh, them to certain systems that are already existing etc but yes sir so far it's the tablets so i am hoping that it will now trickle down to the mobile devices as well absolutely uh, just a last comment uh, ta tablets are indeed expensive uh, most of this uh, where we are seeing tablets pushing mobile learning in the corporate enterprises are where the enterprise is themselves uh, giving those tablets to their employees so it's not uncommon these days to find an enterprise of uh, having 500 sales people giving each one of them a tablet to improve their efficiency let them be connected to the crm constantly uh, let them pull out relevant information, make their presentations uh, when they are really on the move, etc. So there are many things that, that are being done by some of these organizations, uh, though I agree, yes, uh, tablets are not being bought by individuals for these purposes. So coming back to this particular thing, uh, need for mobile learning, you need to identify what what is your real need, what kind of pain area can you uh, possibly resolve or if there is something that you are trying to achieve which was not really possible uh, with other technologies or tools that were at your disposal earlier you need to assess readiness that's the second step in your organization uh, when you are evaluating and implementing mobile learning audience profile you know uh, you need to obviously there are different sets of uh, companies manufacturing sector may not be in some cases maybe in some countries in some regions may not be as advanced as the IT sector uh, your average age of staff might be higher or lower depending on that you may want to assess whether your organization would be ready to accept a solution like this you also obviously need to have management buy-in uh, you, know, you don't need to get into something where your management is really not uh, convinced that this is a long-term thing that we need to get into so yes I mean you would essentially need to look at that uh, you also need to look at the culture inside your organization of sharing commenting being able to take others comments uh, in, in, in the right spirit and learn from it uh, as we said earlier the first principle that we discussed today which is mobile everything if uh, if people are not uh, tuned to the culture of sharing and commenting and learning with each other uh, and especially on a slightly larger scale because when you open up uh, a system like this it would be largely social and informal learning happening through mobile devices it may not really uh, work well so that culture would need to be uh, there if you have to really implement a decent level of mobile learning and obviously a learning strategy fit where does it really fit into your overall strategy Then uh, you need to obviously consider what devices and platforms to support. There is a whole range of devices, uh, right from uh, the cheapest uh, feature phones to the costliest tablets, and not to mention uh, some of these devices, MP3 players and audience response systems, gaming consoles, uh, e-readers. You know, yes, I mean, if you were to see theoretically, each one of them are capable of delivering mobile learning. 
uh, are they capable of delivering mobile learning in the workplace? Uh, I would really not bank on this set of uh, devices unless an organization already has a set of MP3 players and they can rely on that and leverage that uh, to possibly roll out their initial programs and build some success, uh, you know, get some early wins and then roll out a bigger program and have you know, much, much bigger plans around it. Uh, but yes, for the enterprise, uh, I don't personally see these devices playing a key role. In fact, uh, as we go uh, down the line, we'll probably find uh, even the feature phones would become uh, very limited in terms of the proportion that would be available. Of course, it is going to be a, a, a decision that uh, an organization needs to take whether they are going to fulfill everybody's uh, or they're going to make it accessible to everyone or they are happy to leave out maybe two, three, five percent of people if they don't have the kind of devices that they're targeting. So again, you know, it's, it's there, there are no right or wrong answers there. The fidelity of solution changes when you are moving to better devices, you know, and, and with that you can really achieve much more. But if, you, if uh, providing universal access, everybody should be available to, uh, should be there on the, on the platform, then you're looking at the cheapest denominator. Just a few indicators which are telling us that uh, smartphones will become predominantly the, the kind of phones that will be available in enterprises. Eric Schmidt, uh, the chairman at uh, Google, had said that uh, you will have Android smartphones at $70 in, in a year's time. Uh, Huawei has actually launched EDIOS uh, brand of uh, smartphones, I think in Africa, somewhere for nine, $80. Beetle in India has a $200 tablet, which has which is a commercial uh, uh, product. And Sony has uh, publicly declared that they are phasing out feature phones, which means that Sony is now only focusing on smartphones. You know, so essentially, and we would probably see that trend uh, continuing, and most uh, device manufacturers would, feature, you know, uh, stop making any feature phones. You may have uh, lower end smartphones. Of course, a $70 smartphone would probably be a lower end smartphone. So, but yes, uh, you would see a lot of uh, smartphones in, in the enterprise. I would probably uh, look at this set of devices, smartphones and tablets, to be the target uh, devices that we would want to support in the enterprise. But again, that's based on my understanding of maybe my workplace or the kind of the clients that we have been talking with, but you have to decide which platforms you would want to support. In the long run, I would uh, probably see that you know both of these devices would kind of uh, come down to a merging point somewhere. We're already seeing the screen sizes increasing. iPhone 5 has a bigger size than what I've shown here. The Galaxy S3 has a bigger size. Uh, so you'll probably find that 5 to 7 inches uh, would be the ideal size. And then we can also look at the same set of solution going out at, you know, between 5 to 7 inches of size. Absolutely, tablets are getting smaller and smartphones are getting bigger. That's exactly where uh, I see the sweet spot for uh, uh, M-learning in, in the corporate space. All right, quickly moving on to the platforms, you know, uh, or, or the operating systems that you may want to, you know, sometimes you may have to think, are we going to support all of these? Are we going to support just one of these? Especially true when you are looking at uh, any native capabilities. So again, if you are distributing those devices, you know which device to support. If you are not distributing devices from company's account, then you have to still think about how many types of uh, you know, uh, OSs you are going to support. Uh, so it's going to be ultimately one or two ecosystems, you know, so you may look at uh, a Windows ecosystem, and which I believe is going to be a very strong competitor in this space once Windows 8 is out. Uh, because of its uh, very, very strong presence in the corporate space uh, in uh, the desktop domain. So it would easily link in. And uh, so you will have to obviously think about are you really going with one ecosystem or you are trying to have one broader system and then we can possibly support one or two different uh, OSs. 
symbian symbian is uh, you know, i don't think uh, nokia is really pushing that anymore uh, i think i think all of their energy is really going behind windows 8 themselves because their survival is really dependent on the success of windows 8 i i really don't think symbian has a very long term future The another aspect that obviously you need to define is BYOD policies in your enterprise, which is uh, bring your own device. Uh, so if you are not distributing phones to your staff members, then you need to define uh, you know certain rules and policies which are clearly articulated. Uh, and if, as we said earlier about security, when we're talking about the myths, if you wish to really implement higher end uh, security, then you are looking at MDMs and MAMs kind of devices to help you. Okay, fourth step is some of those technology bits. Whether you want to build a native app or mobile web, which one you are really going for. I think in the short run, uh, it's still in the favor of uh, native app if you are delivering especially an offline experience. So there's no question that if you're delivering an offline experience, uh, you can't do it through the web. You have to create an app. So if your purpose is that somebody who's inside the mines need to do something or who's in areas where there is no network, he needs to process some information, he needs to access some videos, etc. You can package them into an app. In the long term, mobile web is 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 probably the way to go for almost everything. Uh, the experience would be much better as, as the HTML5 really keeps on developing. Uh, but in the short run, I think it's, it's depending on what you really want to achieve today and what the technology is capable of. By the way, HTC did launch or showcase a couple of new Windows 8 phones, 8S and 8 uh, something. So yes, I think HTC is moving on to Windows 8 as well. I think Samsung, uh, HTC, Nokia, all of them are, are now beginning to showcase some of their Windows 8 phones. So if anybody is looking out for Windows 8, I think in the next two months we'll see, if not more, at least seven, eight different devices. Flash versus HTML5, the discussion is really not dead, though I think the winner is clearly HTML5. I think I'm, I'm really bringing this here because of the myth that e-learning is what you know, want to deliver on your mobile devices. I think till it makes sense and till your mobile strategy has evolved to some level, it, it, it would not really be worthwhile to look at everything being done in HTML5. Quite frankly, HTML5 will take some years to start delivering the experience that you used to get in Flash or still get in Flash. I think one of the uh, attendees also mentioned in the chat, I just read that. Uh, so as of now, if, if your mobile thing is not really, or the strategy is not so evolved, uh, it would be best to have uh, courses still developed in Flash, the e-learning, the traditional one, and uh, we can look at other options for mobile learning. Authoring tools, uh, again, uh, developing once and delivering everywhere is sort of a myth to be treaded with caution. It will work in some cases. In most cases, I don't think that's a good strategy because it is very, very contextual, uh, the, the, the use of M-learning, and which is what we'll probably see as the next uh, item that we're going to see. Uh, LMS integration, uh, once again, linked with the myth that we were talking of, not really looking to integrate SCOM always. Uh, yes, it's a good requirement to have if you are doing compliance training on mobile phones. TinCan is, is something which is very promising for future and hopefully it will help in, in, in changing the perception of what really tracking is. Uh, it's, it's an excellent concept. And build versus outsource. This is obviously something that you would start thinking almost uh, immediately once you are thinking about doing mobile learning because uh, it's, it's, it's a new domain uh, for most enterprises and they may not have resources in-house. So outsourcing is uh, an option for a lot of companies. And building a team internally might be very, very expensive. Uh, it's, it's a growing domain. Resources are costly and hard to get. So yeah, I think uh, you'll, you'll have to 
so really see what your situation is and uh, which place you are situated in and uh, what's the kind of resource uh, environment over there. Correct, Adobe is not supporting mobile flash anymore. So uh, the flash that I'm talking of is only for your e-learning. Because for e-learning, uh, I think uh, uh, flash is still a very good uh, choice for your desktops and PCs. I'm also a Nokia fan, by the way. Uh, uh, Elizabeth, I'm waiting for the 920 to be launched in India. All right, so here is uh, the photograph that some of you may have seen yesterday and which really brings us to the one of the key uh, aspects. Context drives content and that is very, very important when you're looking. You know, the technology bits will get sorted, uh, but if you if we fail on this one, uh, there is, it's a sure disaster because your learners will shun it, they will not like it and they will not come to it. If they don't do that, and if they essentially don't uh, come to your M learning, then the whole effort is really wasted. I think the and you know if you were to put the two principles in context, uh, you know here we can simply think about the mobile everything aspect as well as augmentation. What can we do to help this person do his job well and reduce errors? reduce risk to his life, reduce risk to others, uh, reduce the cost of multiple trips. Let's say he doesn't know something and he gets down and gets into his van and maybe calls up someone, someone comes in and then they do it or maybe some other way, maybe he does, doesn't uh, know how to do it and he has to go back and come again, etc. How can we help him be more productive? And that's exactly what mobile learning should be ideally focusing on. So. I think we we had a quick uh, you know round of chat uh, discussion yesterday. Uh, what kind of content will work here? I think uh, we need to see uh, what is the person's context. We probably would deliver some sort of performance support nuggets, maybe videos. Uh, maybe the the whole uh, thing that you're creating on his mobile device is one hand operated or even voice driven so that he doesn't have to really use both his hands. Uh, so here's a phrase borrowed uh, from Judy Brown which is think different which is out of the course. It is not e-learning to m-learning that we are really trying to do here. So it's the context that will drive the content that you are really trying to give to your audience. Yeah, uh, well, they he, if that's the correct pronunciation. Yes, I, I, there is a little research that's available on this uh, topic. So I would also love to find out. And if you find something, please share. Most of the research is really focused on the, the academic sector at the moment. Wi-Fi proximity devices. Uh, are, you, are you looking at... Uh, you know, some sort of a router that's available for near range Wi-Fi uh, that's available. Absolutely, Martin. That, that is exactly what uh, we believe that E and M will be forgotten and M is being used more for convenience sake to differentiate it from the other modes. But eventually, and uh, hopefully we'll be bringing that up in our uh, last webinar on Friday is that uh, all of our learning will merge into you know, uh, one uh, 
almost a seamless structure. Some of it will be very, very ubiquitous. All right, uh, Larry, what, what you're probably uh, intending to tell us is uh, the difference between uh, people who have internet access and those who don't have internet access in India. It's absolutely correct. Uh, incidentally, that's where mobile learning is uh, very useful as well, or mobile access, because a large proportion, and I think it's, uh, it's around 40% or maybe more than that, which uh, in India uses uh, or accesses internet only through mobile phones. So what has not been possible earlier in the last decade or so when the, the internet was available through PCs, just because they were not able to afford PCs, they were not able to connect to the internet. Now that they can afford some sort of mobile phones, they are able to access the internet. So in fact, mobile is bringing the internet to all of these uh, masses, which which is a great thing. Correct. All right. The last uh, aspect that uh, you would uh, definitely need to think about it concerns. It is listed as one of the myths in our session today. But as we said, it is really something that needs to be managed. It is not something that needs to be feared. It is not something that would, uh, you know, that should force you to say, oh, because of this, we can't do it. An example is that uh, the, the US Army is doing mobile learning. And when, uh, you know, in an article which is cited here, uh, when, when they were asked, the, the initiative is called Connecting Soldiers to Digital Applications. So if you were to search on the web for CSDA, you will probably get to uh, some of their pages. But they have uh, security concerns as well, as you would imagine. And uh, when the head of uh, M-Learning was asked about that, it says the Army is pursuing a solution that sidesteps a security issue in a sense. One that ensures that these consumers' smartphones access data without storing it. So essentially, they are providing it uh, through the web. So there is no app, there is no storage. So even if the device goes into the wrong hands, there's nothing that can be really misused. So why I wanted to share this with you is that, of course, uh, the US Army would have very high levels of security concerns about their data and information. Uh, so while your concerns are absolutely valid, we can take comfort from the fact that US Army is still doing some mobile learning. And there's no, that sh the security concern should not really stop us. Yes, we need to take measures on how to really prevent that. So login password protection, data encryption, uh, mobile device management uh, software and mobile application management softwares. Uh, mobile device management softwares would be most usable when you are uh, uh, providing devices to to your staff which are company owned devices because then you can really control the whole device but if you're not uh, then mobile application management solutions would be more suitable so that you can only manage specific applications and as I said earlier remote arrays is a great feature that's available so you can encrypt data encrypt uh, the transfer of data and also have remote arrays and you know, one of the simplest things to do is mobile security policy. You know, most of the times, uh, getting your staff members to understand why it is important and what are do's and don'ts would really solve a lot of things. So that's that's the six uh, 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 steps that I ha I wanted to share in terms of uh, if you were looking looking to do some mobile learning implementation. A final thought here, which. Uh, is, uh, I don't know, good and bad. And the bad part is that you won't get time to really sit down and strategize. The good part is that uh, then you can begin now. Uh, mobile learning strategy is, is in, in my opinion, a moving target. Devices keep coming in, uh, you know, 
every day uh, platforms change features change you know so today uh, you may want to use uh, a particular feature of a phone and in the next version they have three new features maybe that feature has gone off etc uh, so you know it's it's good to remember that mobile learning strategy is a moving target you know it needs to be uh, reviewed frequently and refined as you go along but the most important part is just go ahead and do it you know even if you have a small project in mind you don't really have to wait for a full fledged strategy which is enterprise wide uh, to evolve before you do your first project i think uh, a, a better way because the field is so complex and uh, complicated in terms of various factors that you need to look at uh, it would be great to just do a small project which is within your control you know within a smaller group with a smaller team maybe uh, with the help of a team manager who's more amenable to something like this who wants to implement new things maybe the sales guys who are usually we have seen are the first group that uh, either the their manager or the lnd staff want to really implement mobile learning for but yes doing one of these would really help you get a lot of experience from that and then it will help you further in creating mobile learning strategy which suits you you know all the all the drivers that we mentioned and the steps that we mentioned and the myths that we mentioned are generic and they apply to everyone but there's nothing like applying it to a specific enterprise which of course you would be able to do best once you have done maybe a little bit of experimentation doing one or two uh, small projects learning from them and creating a strategy okay just to summarize what we uh, shared today think mobile everything and mobile augmentation that's really the two key principles that we need to uh, possibly keep in mind uh, and then the steps that we had for uh, implementing mobile learning identifying the real need ensuring readiness devices and platforms to support uh, some technology bits in terms of uh, creating uh, content etc uh, ensuring that the context is being taken into account when creating content security and of course the last one it's a moving target okay once again uh, here are a few thoughts if uh, if, we, if we if we can uh, uh, list some of our and learning desires and constraints and if we can look for some examples uh, i'll just quickly come back to the chat i'll quickly come back to the chat uh, to see some of those comments and respond uh but if you can share those on the uh, the linked uh, google groups that will be great for everyone to really learn from that uh and you know people can comment on that uh, to really build on uh, what what you are experiencing uh and there is a last webinar that will be happening on friday which is uh, 28 at 3 pm brussels time which will be on future of and learning where we are trying to discuss uh, where do we see uh, mobile learning evolving uh, maybe in the short term and the long term and i'll be uh, calling in a colleague of mine to to deliver that webinar uh, 